Class is now open. Look at this, an electrical duplex receptacle outlet. This is for beginners. Okay, that's why I titled it that way. If you don't know anything about replacing an electrical outlet, this video is for you. So stick around. I've got lots to teach you. Now I just happen to have an electrical duplex outlet just like this that I'm going to be replacing. And why am I going to be replacing it, you might add. You might ask. Well, hey, it's right here in the hallway and it's got this little thing on here. What do you suppose that is? If you have cats and if they've been pissing on your carpet or if you've just recently moved and they're not in a, a good environment that they're used to, they may start pissing on your carpet. Okay? That's why you want something like this. This is called Comfort Zone and this is a value pack. It comes with the little outlet and these little containers. That's what this thing here is. Okay? We put one, our cat started pissing on this carpet, brand new carpet. And we thought, what are we going to do? Are we Are going to have to get rid of the cat? What can we do? And so we put these in. We put one upstairs and we put one downstairs. We put one downstairs, uh, way down in there. And it just, it just uh, shoots off a smell. You can't even really smell it. Um, uh, humans can't smell it. Dogs can't smell it. It doesn't affect dogs. It just affects cats. And son of a gun, she has not pissed on this carpet that I know of since. Okay? But this electrical outlet is still working. So what gives? Why am I going to be replacing it with this one? Well, see this? I've got, I got like a paper napkin right under it. Now see when you plug it in, see how this thing tilts? I think the reason why it's tilting like that is because this electrical outlet uh, has been used. This condo is over 15 years old and this one probably has been used by people to vacuum. If you've noticed, that's the only electrical outlet down low in this area uh, to, to hook up a vacuum. Granted, there's an electrical outlet back there, but I'm not going to move that every time I need to plug in the vacuum. Okay, this is the plug that's nice for everybody to use for the last 15 years, plug in a vacuum. And after time, these little tines in here get kind of worn and then it gets loose. Now see how this is like this? And if, if you leave these things like this, see how this is kind of going down at an angle? What happens is there's a wick in there. That little brown thing in there is a wick and it soaks the, the uh, liquid up into here. This heats it and it sets on top of this top base, but, and then it, uh, the aroma comes out into the air. Well, if you have it at a slight angle, you get some stuff up here. It has a tendency to have this liquid come down and collect on the bottom of this. And what, it, what do you suppose it does? It drips. And like this, you would never know it until it's probably too late, until it messes up your carpet, or if you have a, if you have a lighter carpet, you're going to see a stain there. And so that's why I put this, that's why I put this back in there like that, to keep that straight up and down. Well, I don't want to do that all the time, so that's why I thought I would replace that electrical outlet with this. These are stiffer, so when I plug this into here, the theory is, and what I'm hoping is, is that this thing is not going to sag. Now see, just recently I replaced another electrical outlet down here, and I've got that on my channel too, of course. I don't know what I've titled it, and I'm going to do another one up here, and I'm going to title it something different. Oh, here's, here's a little culprit right here. The little pissing machine on the carpets, but now she doesn't really do that anymore. Yeah, that's a nice pit bus. Oh, she likes it down here now. Now see, uh, before... I replace this one. Look at it. This one drip, 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 drip. It's not dripping anymore, and I can feel underneath there. It's dry as bone. And that's what I'm going to do up here. Now, if your electrical outlet, if you have an electrical outlet that's broken, or the uh, 
the ground where the ground plug gets plugged in like right down here lots of times if this is cracked out you should replace it or if your top piece is loose or maybe your top piece is missing you say and you think oh, I'll just leave it and I'll just plug it in down here well that's an accident ready to happen if, if you've got kids if somebody pokes something in there they could electrocute themselves or something or if if you have a crack in here if it's pushed in whatever it is you want to replace it go down to the store that's why I'm making this video so before before I replace this I am going to show you a few things you may not know what's going on with an electrical outlet if you've never installed an electrical outlet before like I say this is for beginners so stick around I got some interesting facts to tell you about this electrical outlet <laughs> that's funny I'm just gonna put it on this little cat stand right here my little work bench as it were and we're gonna take a few uh, looks on here as to what's going on with this did you know you can get an electrical outlet like this at your local hardware store for about oh, this one was less than a dollar 77 cents to be exact you don't want to buy one in a cardboard box lots of times Lots of times they'll have electrical outlets in a cardboard box like this. This this happens to, to be a switch, but sometimes you'll find these in here, you know. But I usually like to get the ones that are loose in a tray, and they're the cheapest ones you can get. 77 cents for this. They work just as well as the $1.99 ones or whatever. And this one happens to have the little round out faces like that and and then they also have rectangular ones have you seen the rectangular ones if you've not seen the rectangular ones i don't happen to have one here but i have light switches here see how it's rectangular well they have electrical outlets like that so then you would have to get a cover plate you know with the uh, uh with the knockouts like this okay but it's always nice when you're replacing something look at your existing electrical outlets okay see see what kind they are see that's the one I'm gonna replace now see that's the that's the old school style is what I've got that's what I call it old school and then it's got this cover plate with the two round knockouts and you also look at all of your light switches and your electrical outlets and hopefully they're all the same color now th these happen to be white now um, in older houses, they're kind of ivory color. Okay, so you don't want to just run to the store and get an ivory one and put it down where a white one is. Or, or go to the store, oh, yeah, I just need an electrical outlet. I don't know. I'll just pick one up. They're all the same. And you come back and it's an off-white one. It's that the, uh, the vanilla color, the off-white. And you put it in there and it doesn't match. I've seen that lots of times even even sometimes they'll do that with uh, GFI uh, outlets let's let's take a look in here let's let's just see what what they did oh I've got the oh that's right I've got the I've got the power I've got the power turned off here here's a GFI electrical outlet and it happens to be white on white lots of times these are off colored and sometimes they'll put an off colored one here with the white cover plate because they weren't paying attention when they went to the store they didn't get the right color okay so the first thing you want to know is get the right color okay match match your existing conditions see here's one here in the bedroom yep sure enough it's that same kind you, you take you take a peruse check around yep sure enough white on white all the light switches are white on white white light switches white cover plates not the off-white okay so everything's gonna match that's that's one of the first things I do before I go down to the hardware store and pick something out now lots here's here's something else you're gonna wanna well here's something interesting I find on these when I when I take a look at this um, uh, they have two different kinds they have a 15 amp uh, electrical outlet and they also have 20 amp well, what's the difference you might say well 15 amp lots of times they'll have 
uh, 15 amp, and those are generally the ones that you install uh, in a house, okay? Like all your electrical outlets in your bedroom will probably be this one 15 amp, but you know, in, in, the, uh, in the kitchen, they're probably 20 amp. They're probably 20 amp, and lots of times 20 amp electrical outlets might have a line right there, and that might distinguish it, but then also you can look you can look up in here, and I see on this one, it says 15A right there. That tells me this is a 15 amp one. Here's another little thing right there, see that? 15A, 125V means 125 volt. Okay, 125 volt, 15 amp. And so I know this is the one that I want. The funny thing is, when you go down to your electrical panel, Let's just let's just go down there. This is a this is a uh, a training video, and I'm trying to teach you some different things having to do with electrical. So count yourself lucky. Lots of times, I don't know where you're going to find something like this on a YouTube channel. Uh, they'll probably just tell you how to install an electrical outlet, and they tell you how to take it apart, put it back it together, and all that kind of stuff. I'm giving you the meat and the potatoes, so to speak, on. A few things having to do with electrical. Okay, so here's here's my electrical sub panel, and I'm going to look at this, and and you can you can read all the different things. And the funny thing is, on that electrical outlet up there, it didn't list. It's upstairs and stuff. I actually found it under living room, and and see, look at this. See all of these? These are your breakers, and. They all happen to say 20 on them, don't they? See there? They all say 20. That's kind of odd. Um, but here's the thing. Um, lots of times you'll have, in your sub panel, you'll have lots of them that'll say 15 amp, 15, and you'll have some that say 20. The 15s are usually for your bedroom, electrical outlets and your bedroom light fixtures and all kinds of stuff like that. But this happens to be a condo and they thought, ah, forget it. Let's just run everything 20 amp. Okay. And that's something important to know. Why is that? Because for 20 amp, all of your electrical wiring inside the house is going to be 12 gauge wire. Okay. 12 gauge wire. That's the size of the copper. Okay. Solid 12 gauge wiring. And 15 amp circuits are usually run by 14 gauge wire. Now what's the difference? Well, the 14 gauge wire is a little bit thinner, a little bit smaller than your 20. I just happen to have, I just ha happen to have a couple little pieces of wire here. And I was gonna show you some different things. Now, I think one of these is, is uh, 12 gauge wire and one's, and one's 15 or 14 gauge wire, okay? And it kind of makes a difference. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna strip off some. Here's my little strippers, and here's something else you're gonna need to know. If you use strippers, they got little numbers on the side. See there, there's a 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and you go if for 12 gauge wire. I'm gonna use the hole. That's the 12, and I know that's the second one. Okay, I'm just gonna set it on there, twist, pull it off. Kaboom. Okay, now this one I, I think is is 14. So I, I count up three. That's 14s right there, see? Right there. So I can strip that wire right there. Okay, so I'm going to pull that off carefully. Now, can you see the difference? See how this one's thinner than that? See there? And I can usually tell when you're running wire after a while, you can generally tell this one can bend a little bit easier. Uh, the 14 gauge wire as opposed to the 12 gauge wire is a little bit stiffer. When I first looked at the ends of these, I was trying to see here's an end that, that hasn't been stripped. When you first look at it, it's kind of hard to tell if one's thicker than the other until you strip the wire. Sometimes if it's kind of pushed in there, you might think, oh, these are both the same, but they're not. And that's a, a very important aspect to know because when you're getting ready to install an electrical outlet, okay, this is a 15 amp, right? This is 15 amp. There's three different ways to install a wire 
on a 15 amp uh, electrical outlet. Okay, let's just let's just show you a couple of them. Here's here's one way is on the back. See those little holes? You would poke the wire into the back. Okay, you poke it into the back. Another way you could do it is loosen up this side screw and put it on the side like that. Okay, and clamp the screw, the screw down. I've seen electricians do that. Some electrical outlets are set up that way. I don't like doing it that way because it has a tendency of, of possibly sliding out. There's a, little, there's a little concave area right there where you put your wire in there and let it set on there and, and clamp that down. If you're not paying attention, maybe you don't clamp it down properly. And when you push this into the wall, maybe this wire pops out or whatever. What I like to do, uh, the third way is is to wrap it around this, okay? Which would mean that you would you would take this and you would, I, I usually make about an inch long, okay, on the side. And, ah, I dropped a piece on the carpet. I'll have to find it later. And then you would, you would take one of these holes here and put it on your wire, you know, let it stick out a little bit. I usually let it stick out about an eighth of an inch, three sixteenths, and then I would turn the wire up and pull out. And you'd have yourself a nice little loop like that. Okay. Then when you put it when you put it on, the you want the loop going the same direction as you're tightening this screw. So this would fit this would fit on there like that. See? And then you would tighten that down. But but see, I would I would strip this a little bit longer. This wasn't this wasn't an inch long. I would I would want to strip it about an inch long, okay? So that at the end, um, well, let's just leave it the way it was, okay? And I'll and I'll show you what happens if you don't have that long enough. After you, after you get it attached on here, uh, let's let's. There we go. Okay. Usually I like to have that end sticking out further. Then I can take my my uh, strippers and clamp down on it to get it to get it so it's never going to fall off of that screw. And then I tighten up the screw. Okay. I don't want to just leave it like that without doing that. It's just one last little guarantee when you crimp when you kind of tighten that and pinch it together. On beyond the screw to where um, the screw once you tighten up the screw you know that that's never going to fall off okay so bear with me now okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna just cut this off and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you some other things now I was telling you there's a difference on 15 amp and 20 amp Generally, if you're going to see 20 amp circuit breakers, you know that the electrician has run. Do you think he's run any 15 or 14 gauge wire in the condo? No, he's not going to run any of this wire at all because 14 gauge wire is for 15 amp circuits. It's a smaller gauge wire. This is the 20, 20 amp wire, which is the 12 gauge wire. So everywhere in the condo, is running 12 gauge. So I know when I when I pull that electrical outlet apart, I have a good feeling that this wire is going to be wrapped around the side screw or it's going to be attached on the side like that. It's not going to be in the back. Now years ago, why do I know that? Well years ago uh, they had this this little hole a little bit bigger than that so that you can run either either 12 gauge wire in there or 14 gauge. Now today's ones they have this little bit smaller. Here's the here's the the uh, 14 gauge wire. I'm having a hard time pushing it in that hole. Maybe if I push and push and push it might go, but it's not it's not designed to go in here. They they did something smart. They thought, "Hey, we'll fix you. We don't want we don't want 14 gauge or 12 gauge wire run into a 15 amp uh, electrical outlet okay that's why uh, let me just 
here I'll, I'll cut this back off and I know it's the third one now and if you ever have a question you look on there 10 12 14 it's the third one for, for the 14 gauge wire 12 gauge wire it's the it's the second one okay now the smaller wire slips right in there look at that it slips right in see now and I can push it straight in uh oh I can't look at that I, I don't want it in there but they they do something really good there they give you an option to get it to take it out you take a little screwdriver like this if you want to pull these out so let's say you made a mistake or let's say you're going to replace uh, an electrical outlet and you got 15 amp breakers and you know the wire is is uh, uh, 14 gauge wire and so when you pull this out of the wall you've got all these wires on the back I used to just cut them off and then restrip them again you know but if your wire is not sticking out of the wall very far the more you cut it the shorter you get so there's a little slot right there just for a small screwdriver see it's a slot right below right below the top holes and right above the bottom holes see there you would push on that and then pull on the black see there I pushed right in there and it's like a spring-loaded deal okay hey I can do it wherever it is as long as I push pushing on there get it in there and this pulls right out okay and you can see there's all kinds of interesting things on an electrical outlet that you might not have known uh, that's one and then you might think well which side do I put the black wires which side do I put the white wires well the white wires always go on the side see this have you ever noticed the left hand slot is longer than the right hand slot left hand slot is for the white wires the other reason I know that you turn it on the side see these these are silver screws silver screws are for the white wires gold screws see on this side they're gold that's for the black wires and then there's a there's an interesting little thing on the back if you wanted to really look at it it there's more wording up in there and it says hot push push to hot and that was meaning you can push on those to get the wire out and hot means black the black wire is always the hot wires okay that's for that side that's for these this is the black and it doesn't you know when you connect one this side little clip right here connects both of these so if you only have one black wire hooked up to here the power at is actually going to both sides because this little thing right here makes it like that just this little tab connects this screw to that screw so does it matter hey which side do I put the one of the blacks black what which black wire do I put on top bottom well it doesn't really matter for that particular thing and on the on, on the other side you got the same thing this thing is connected together with these two side screws and that the green screw is always for the ground okay and let's look let's look at some other stuff well that it said hot so I know this is the hot side this other side I look and it says white okay and eat on lots of lots of electrical outlets now it, it even tells you right here for installation instructions go to leviton.com slash forward slash instructions well if you want more information about an electrical outlet you can do that okay what, what else is on here there's even a gauge, a wire stripping gauge. You might think, how how far? How far do I strip this? Like, like if I'm gonna push it in the back, okay, with the with the uh, let's let's get the thinner wire out here. Let's say we're we're using the uh, let's say we're gonna put this on a 15 amp circuit. We're using the 14 gauge wire. Is this long enough, do you think, to put in there and to get in there far enough or not? Is there, is there a, well, do you just guess or what? No. Right, look at that right there. It's kind of hard to see. 
You see it right there? It says, I got to look in the sun here. It says strip gauge. You see that right there? Strip gauge. Son of a gun. I can strip it. Now I can hold it up there like that. And is that long enough? No. I got to go another eighth of an inch. So I go another eighth of an inch and I can eyeball that. I'm going to strip that off carefully. And I'm going to look at that. And that's probably pretty close. If I wanted to check, I can hold it right in there. See that little notch right there? I can hold it there. And I can push it in there. Oh, that's pretty close. It's still just a hair short, isn't it? So I can strip it a little bit longer. And I don't have to do that for every wire. It, it's like if, if you forgot or something, you can do this on the very first one, let's say. Okay. And I hold it up in there. That's, that's really good, isn't it? See there? Okay, then I can take my... I could take my tape measure and I can measure this. I think it's a little over five eighths of an inch. You see there, it's a long five eighths of an inch. Right there. And um, I, I could have also uh, measured this with my tape measure and measure from there over. And it looks like just a little bit over five eighths of an inch. Okay, then after I strip the, my first ones, I can look at that, I can measure that with my tape measure, whatever, okay? But now, that's for, fi that's for 15 amp. And when I pull, when I pull the, old, the old one out of the wall, I know it's gonna have 12 gauge wire on there. So, what, I, what I'll usually do is I'll strip this, here's my 12 gauge wire, I just swapped it out. Okay, and I try to eyeball, and I try to make that about an inch. And I will look at that. Now see, I'm, I'm pretty close at an inch right there. Okay, that way when I, when I get it through there, I'll, I'll stick it out maybe uh, an eighth, three sixteenths, or, or maybe even a hair more than that. And then I and then I'll turn it up, okay, like that. So that once, and then and then you got to kind of slightly bend it, and and uh, and see with with the with the 12 gauge wire. Sometimes you have to kind of irk it like that, and then you kind of sometimes you have to kind of put it on at an angle, and then after it goes on, then you slide it into place like that. Now see how that piece is sticking over? Then I would take this and hold it away from there so that I can grab that right there and kind of pinch that together, mm -hmm. then pull the slop out and then tighten the screw up. You see what I mean? I'm not going to do that right now, right? I'm just trying to show you. Okay, so all, all those different things come into play when you're installing an electrical outlet like this. Now here's one more thing to know about this. See those, see those little grooves right there? See there's a slight groove indentation right there. Here's another one right there. You look on these tabs, one there, one there. Well, I can take, I can take those off. I can take a pair of pliers, I can take this and bend it back and forth and pull those off. The only reason why you're going to do that is if you put this in a cut-in box. Let's say that the box is on the outside of the sheetrock wall, then this rectangular bit fits inside that box, and you don't want these tabs, because if you have these, these little tabs here, that's going to be on the outside of the box, and that's going to let it stick out further. Your cover plate might not fit tight to your wall, okay? And so then you would pop those off. If I broke those off, then I would save those and put in my nail bag, and I'd use those for little washers. I can use for shim washers for later on or whatever. And I've done that several times. Okay. So those are all the different things about this electrical outlet. Now at the store, 
Um, you ever seen those little plastic things for kids, the, those little guards that you plug in there? You got one for the top, one for the bottom, and it's kind of a pain to pull those off. Uh, and, and it's like to make your electrical outlet child-proof so that they don't stick anything in there and electrocute themselves. Well, they have some electrical outlets at the store that you can buy nowadays. They're about $3, 3 or $4, and there's a little plate that goes across there. So when you get ready to plug something in, that plate is on a spring-loaded deal, and it, and it pops out so that you can plug something in there for your top. And here, you would just see white because that plate would be on there across there. And that would make it child proof. Okay. So, but then you would have, you know, if you wanted that in, in all your bedrooms, all your lower electrical outlets, you'd have to replace all your electrical outlets and your, in your house or whatever, if you wanted to make them child proof that way. Or if you're doing a, a new house, you can get all child proof electrical outlets, let's say. And I, I saw that the other time I was at the store. Okay. Now here's here's another thing to realize, and I don't know why they do it, but see, as I told you, this is a 15 amp, and, and I know that because it says 15A there, it says 15A over there. They they let you run electrical 15 amp electrical outlets on a tw on 20 amp circuits because on this in this condo, all of the electrical outlets, the lower ones, are 15 amp electrical outlets. Okay, and they did that, and they're running them on on uh, the 20 amp circuits. I don't know why um, code lets you do that, why inspectors let you do that, because in the kitchen for 20 amp, you should have 20 amp uh, electrical outlets connected onto uh, a GFI breaker, like like for your blender, your toaster, your, your, uh, uh, um, any, you know, a mixer, an automatic mixer, stuff like that that you have on your, on your counter in your kitchen, let's say. Um, or your bathrooms. Lots of times your bathrooms will be on 20 amp circuits, and then you're going to want 20 amp electrical outlets, 20 amp GFI outlets, and that kind of thing, because you're running motors and stuff. But lots of times on on your your different plugs inside uh, your your bedrooms and stuff. Lots of times you're going to plug in a vacuum, or you may plug in uh, a lamp, you know, by your bed, or your charger for your phone, stuff like that. And so, lots of times uh, you're not going to overload a circuit. You don't you don't want to overload a circuit with too much power on a 15 amp circuit because then it could trip your breaker or your breaker may not trip, and it may be your wire fries up in your wall, or or something sparks right at right at your electrical outlet, or something like that. Okay. Now let's just let's just see if my hypothesis is right on that for these particular um, electrical outlets in this condo. I said they should be fifty. They're probably 15 amp, and I can probably see that right there, or right up there on the existing electrical uh, plug, the one that I'm going to be replacing out here. Okay, let's just for ducks. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't uh, install all this stuff 20 years ago, 15 years ago in this condo. I'm making the assumption because lots of houses you have that, but. Because this is condo, they shouldn't really have that, and maybe the inspector caught it. I don't know. I don't know. Let's just, I'm going to be curious to, to know. And I've already turned the power off to this here, and I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can quickly see that. I, I put little foam deals in here uh, for insulation. If you have exterior walls or even interior walls, a lot of times you put your hand up there. If you feel cold air coming through there, you can you can fix that by having having these little uh, foam pads that you can put in there. And I did that on all my electrical outlets and my light switches throughout the condo. There weren't that many. And I thought I'm just going to do that just for the sake of argument. I'm going to get my uh, electrical tester uh, just to show you 
that, that it's off. I've got the breaker off downstairs. I, I had to check six or seven different breakers and then I had to wiggle it in here and stuff. Okay. And I don't even have to take this out of the wall. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna turn my, uh, uh, my light on on my cell phone. Okay. I'm gonna look on there and it says 15A there and it's hard to see that up there. And I see this one happens to ha be written down at the bottom and there's paint over it and all that kind of stuff. But I can't really see, I could scratch the paint off and see, but right there at the plastic it says 15A. All of the electrical outlets in this condo, as I thought, are 15 amp. Uh, and, and I don't know, I, I can't say all of them. Maybe, uh, maybe the ones in the kitchen aren't. I don't know that for sure or not, unless I take a, a cover plate off in the kitchen just for kicks. Wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be something? I mean, I, I eventually, I probably should know this already, shouldn't I? I mean, you, I think you want to know this. Let's just go down there for kicks. Um, I'm thinking uh, they ran 20, 20 amp uh, electrical outlets here and and I'm not sure if they did or not now see um, here's an electrical outlet here here's one here this is a GFI and that GFI here's another GFI here now see this GFI probably c uh, controls those two electrical outlets that GFI right there probably controls that one and I don't know if I can quickly find out on on a GFI if I can see on here without taking the cover off um, or the uh, uh, maybe I'll take maybe I'll take that off down there uh, hey since I've gone this far this is part this is part of your your lesson I'll be right back and we'll get it checked out Okay, you're just going to have to trust me on this. I'm shining this down here. I'm looking right down here and it says 15A. 15A. And I also, uh, I didn't pull, I didn't pull that one off. I pulled this one, this one off over here. Okay, and that says 15A. Isn't that something? I mean, I would never really do that in a kitchen. These are on 20 amp circuits, circuit breakers. You saw that in the sub panel. They have 15 amp uh, GFI outlets and they also have 20 amp GFI outlets. There's a reason why. Because if you put the 15 amp in there and you overload the circuit, well, I guess their theory is here, hey, if you overload it beyond 15 amps, it's going to trip the 15 amp circuit before anything else and then it's going to trip the other uh, electrical outlets that are connected but in my view I would have ran 20 amp uh, GFI electrical outlets and then on these particular electrical duplex receptacles I would have made sure that when I was at the store I got 20 amp um, duplex receptacles and not the 15 amp okay that is the rest of the story if you have any questions about that you can ask you can google it you can ask somebody at the hardware store go to the electrical area and and, and ask them what hey what, what are your thoughts or when the inspector comes out ask him what he thinks but I think the inspector kind of missed that I would not do this in my judgment and that's just my point of view if you got any questions or comments you want to send me please do so you know, and in fact, I'm going to be installing a uh, backsplash up here in the kitchen. And um, before I do that, next time I'm at the hardware store, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask somebody there at the electrical uh, department what they would do, what they would, 
recommend in a kitchen area like this. And I'm gonna, I'm, I'm thinking he's, I'm highly, likely gonna hear him say, uh, change since you have a 20 amp circuit breaker and all of your wires in the kitchen are 12 gauge wires, go ahead and change out these uh, 15 amp GFIs to 20 amp GFIs, and then take your duplex electrical re receptacles that are attached to those GFIs, which are those two, and and this one over here. Um, to go ahead and replace those with with uh, with 20 amp duplex outlets, and I could do all that when I get ready to do the um, backsplash. Because once I get ready to do the backsplash, because all the electrical is there, what I'm going to have to do is either I'm going to have to disconnect. If I was going to save all these electrical outlets, I would pull them out and then pull them all the way out of the wall and then tip them up sideways or twist them sideways and push them back in the box even with the wire still on there. I could leave the breakers off or whatever and then I can put the, uh, I can put the uh, tiles on even with the electrical outlet still there. But in this case, if I were going to be removing all of these, I'd remove the wires, just let the wires stick out, put wire nuts on them, whatever. And then when I got ready to reinstall everything, I'd reinstall the 20 amp, uh, duplex receptacles and the 20 amp uh, GFIs, okay? That's, that's what I would do there. All right, enough of that. Let's see if there's anything else to tell you about that electrical outlet I'm getting ready to install. Well, I think that's about all I have to tell you about an electrical outlet such as this. So for all of those reasons, and for the main reason that even though this electrical outlet is still working because this is, is cocked at an angle because I don't want to have this, this uh, paper towel, napkin, toilet paper, any of that pushed up behind it. I'm going to replace it. And, you know, it's not going to take me very long to replace it. It cost me 77 cents plus tax, less than a buck, to replace this electrical outlet. For all of those reasons, I'm going to replace it. And next time you go around, you're going to start looking around on your, on your plugs, on your outlets at home. Okay, are any of them broken? Are any of these, are any of the, the ground areas broken? If this little thing is snapped off, yeah, code says you're supposed to replace it. If this is cracked or something else or your face is loose, anything like that or one piece is all missing you'll know hey you'll you'll know trust me if you've got anything going on it it's way better this is an insurance policy to replace this rather than to wait to have a fire or have somebody plug in a heater to it or a vacuum cleaner extension cord to it and then pull it out at an angle or something and have it spark or have it catch on fire as you're vacuuming somewhere or in the middle of the night something happens because it was broken and somebody tried to poke something in there or the, or the little ground plug to your extension cord is wedged down in there and now you can only plug in the top two and not the whole through the whole uh, cord get a different cord now because because one stuck in there all, for all those reasons just go ahead and replace it, okay? Now you know all the different things to look at and uh, to, to see what to do, what type of electrical outlet to get at the store, what color to get at the store, what size to get at the store, and all that kind of stuff, okay? And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> that's all I got for this time. But I'll be back with more videos. And if you thought that I was going to tell you and show you how to remove an, a duplex electrical outlet on this video, I'm so sorry about that. But hopefully you got your classroom setting. You're a beginner. You didn't know that much. You know way more now than you did before. Just watch another one of my videos, how to, how to remove an electrical outlet for dummies or Whatever it is, go to my main YouTube channel page. If you can't find them on my channel and you want to look for it, go to my main YouTube channel page, click on playlists, and then scroll down to electrical. I got all kinds of topics on there for how different things on how you can save money around the house, not just electrical, okay? But for this particular purpose, click playlists, scroll down. 
to electrical and then scroll down through the, theirs and see what you're looking for. How to replace an electrical outlet for dummies or how to, how to install a three-way light switch, how to, how to remove a dimmer switch, how to install a dimmer switch, how to, how to install a light fixture, how to install a ceiling fan, how to remove a ceiling fan. Anything having to, a, to do with electrical that I've made on my channel, I've put right there. So look for them on my channel.